we're happy to have um, this panel on transparency. And I think we have three amazing guests. So if everybody could, um, ladies first, introduce themselves and we could start with the questions. Abru. Yes, hello, Andrew. Great to be back with Kingpins, although virtually, um, but we're still very happy. And thank you for giving us the space as well, once again. Uh, so my name is Avril Debak. I have been with the denim and jeans industry for over three decades now. And I'm representing Sufi Enterprises from Pakistan as their executive director, uh, sales and marketing. Please, anybody. All right. Hi, uh, Andrew. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Junaid, and I'm the head of R&D at uh, Siddiq Sons Denim Mill in Pakistan. Uh, Siddiq Sons is a pioneer denim in Pakistan, and I'm, uh, I would like to thank to Andrew for inviting us for this important uh, topic, which is transparency. Besim. Hi, this is Besim. I am the Strategy and Business Development Director of BOSSA. Uh, I'm in the textile in the industry about 25 years, and the, for, for the last 15 years, I'm in the denim industry. And BOSSA is very well known with the traceability, transparency, and sustainability projects. So I'm very, I'm very happy to share these topics with you in the online campaigns. All right, well, let's start with the very first question. Why do we care about transparency? What is it that makes transparency important enough that we have this call or this meeting? You want to answer that, Janet? Let's start with you. All right. So transparency, uh, you know, right, this is the uh, magic word, you know, that's been around uh, for the last couple of years. And it, it has become very important for everyone because, you know, especially after a few incidents in our garment industry, everybody wants to know where they're manufacturing their product, where the raw material is coming from. And especially, you know, now when everybody's looking into sustainability, so the transparency is very, very important for us. So people want to know how responsible their suppliers are, you know, where, uh, from where do we get our raw material? What is the real uh, commercial value of the product? And, you know, what is the story behind uh, what product they're buying out of market? So I feel, you know, this is a very, very important uh, thing uh, for the future, uh, of our clothing industry and you know we need to be more transparent so we can uh, transform all the knowledge you know to the end buyers. Besim or Abru do you have anything extra to add to that or has that been covered? Uh, well actually I want to say that no one has ever looked at a barrel of oil and said mm, this would make a nice pair of jeans right we all know this <laughs> and we all also know the dynamics of our industry how it operates it's this complex gigantic machine so why does transparency actually matter because it's kind of like an for us at sort it's a holistic approach and we're trying to kind of redefine uh, the company's vision and mission what what we stand for around actually transparency because we're not seeing it as a product base but rather as a systems integrated point and we're taking it uh, transparency in social, environmental, and economic values, and the impacts that the actually company can create. Because you know, when you work at scale and when you really resonate with consumers on such a scale, you actually hold the power of making an impact. And that's again through definitely um, transparency. It's kind of like a global stakeholder engagement. You know, that's how we see um, transparency moving forward. Okay. Do you want to add anything? Anything? Yeah, can I add one sentence on the top of what my colleagues just told yeah. you? Uh, actually, we do, I do believe that sustainability, traceability, traceability and transparency are just like uh, very close three sisters. All of them should be, uh, should be at the same time. So you cannot uh, think of a, a sustainability project without a traceability of a, of a transparency project without a, without a sustainability project. So everything should be at the same time. Uh, and when, when you, whenever you combine all of them, that's, that's going to make a bigger difference in the world. What kind of difference? The difference, uh, for example, everyone says that, hey, what we are doing is sustainable. 
But in order to do, uh, in, in order to, to if it's a sustainable or date, or you should all the all the details of the, the data should be very open. For example, if you cannot prove these data with the state studies, or you, if you cannot prove these data uh, with the traceability stories, then I don't think that uh, whatever you told is gonna be the future of the world. So if you if you are willing to say, hey guys, this is uh, sustainable, it should be traceable as well. Uh, and traceability should start from the field level until the, the customer level. All right. So then let me ask you three, um, what do you do now that's actually transparent? Can you name, give me one perfect example of what you do that's transparent now. Can I start? Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll actually we have all day. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll start with two great examples. And we've been organizing a series of trainings for our, both our staff and our stakeholders, focusing on improving our water utilization. And that's a part, part of our Alliance for Water uh, Stewardship, because we see water as a shared responsibility. And I totally agree with Besim in the fact that everything we do needs to be evidence-based. And they, this needs to be traceable, all the transparent, uh, transparency efforts that link into sustainability need to be evidence-based. And also we're working on another extensive project uh, in collaboration with WWF uh, in, in bringing more of a, again, local project in bringing more of a agricultural cotton-based uh, incentive into, into Pakistan. And our recent collab with Miko Underwood of Oak and Acorn who is actually, uh, Miko is on a mission to add a new perspective to denim. And uh, she is the first, uh, she, she has, she's the founder of the first sustainable um, denim brand coming out of Harlem. And we've teamed up with her where it matters most to us, the environment and the community. And I think once you find these right partners, uh, then your efforts in sustainability as well as in transparency start making more sense. Because I think the stories that the company uh, builds need to be told by the shareholders as well, because they, they are a part of the community. So I think those examples make uh, great sense in the fact that it's a co-shared space, not owned by a single party. Okay. Who wants to go follow? Okay, can I go now? Sure. Uh, well, one and a half years ago, we just started a new project called the Towards Zero Waste, actually. Okay, hope you can see that. Towards Zero Waste. Can you hold it up longer? Like okay. four seconds. Okay, everyone's. Towards Zero Waste. Uh, we, that's, uh, we, that, we, we did a study with the Chukurova University, Textile Eng Engineering University. Uh, there are uh, several very uh, good uh, professors at that university. And, and they are in, uh, in our hometown in Adana, near Tubosa. Uh, with, the, with the help of this university, we, we measured all of all uh, data. Uh, I'm talking about, the, for example, water consumption uh, in order to have one meter of denim. Uh, energy consumption, natural gas consumption, electricity consumption, every day the chemical consumption, every detail uh, that we are doing uh, in order to produce a one meter of denim fabric. We, we measured all of them uh, and uh, we, for the last three years and uh, we, we did the projection for the, uh, the aims for the uh, following two, uh, two years. And uh, the reason that we had done it, we uh, honestly opened all of our figures, for example, how much energy we are uh, consuming in the looms, how much electricity we are consuming in the uh, other technologies, the water, the chemicals. The reason that we had done it uh, also, we, uh, we also, we announced the uh, projects, how we, how we accomplish these figures as well. And also, we do believe that these figures are not the best kept secrets of the world. So every company can easily find a, another way to decrease their uh, water consumption or electricity consumption. But the, uh, the best way, to, if you are if you are wondering for a greener world, a better world, what you what we should do is. We should do such kind of a projects and we should announce our best practices with the industry. 
So the other industry shareholders can look these uh, projects and if they're wondering anything, most is open for everyone. They can visit our company and uh, we can share our technology or know-how with the other shareholders and everyone can uh, do a, a better production uh, in their uh, premises. Junaid, what do you think? Yeah, so uh, I would like to second all the gentlemen, you know, that uh, what they're doing. We are doing the similar things as well. So basically, I think now the industry has become more responsible. So we have also digitalized all the data that we have in our production process because we are a fully vertical setup, you know, so starting from the spinning to end product. We, we have digitalized and we have started to take data from all uh, the process uh, that we do on the product. So, for example, you know, like uh, energy, water, steam, you know, all these things now we are storing. So what we have done, these are the things that, you know, everyone is doing and we also want want to be want to do that very uh, responsibly responsibility uh, on other hand what we have done uh, you know we uh, the best example we can give that we have invested in our 50 laundry you know that is the only laundry available in pakistan right now and you know this is in line with this transparency concept where genealogia you know has uh, come up uh, genealogy has introduced this technology where we cannot we have to be very transparent and all the EIM score that we put now is on, on their online server and everyone, they give uh, access to their users. There is a customer can go on their website and they can uh, access all the EIM score uh, through Genealogy server, which is a third party in this case and verifying all the numbers. Who's so, the, sorry, who's the third party? Is uh, Genealogy. They're a third party? Yeah. Why like, are they a third party when they're also the supplier? They are the, uh, I mean, stakeholders with us as well, but they, you know, it's a third uh, party between us and our customer and they verify when we do any recipe, uh, we, we make any recipe in the garment laundry, we upload all the data online into their machines and it goes into their server. So okay. they give an access to uh, our end customer, you know, who can go to their website and check all uh, all the recipes and all the resources we have used during that specific product. All right, can we go back to Denim for a second? Um, this is a question that wasn't on a pre-list um, of questions, so I'm just going to fly with it. Do you guys think it's possible in the next couple of years for every Denim mill that shows a Kingpins to supply us their electrical bills, their car their carbon um, output, their water consumption? Can we have that? Do you, think, do you think that's a reasonable it. request? We should have it because the internet of machines exists we've wow. been working on it yes it does exist especially in the laundry i mean it's a it's another way to link fabrics into it but in the laundry there's a software i mean a but let's start, let's start with let's start with simple things like like spinning for example if we're all going to be transparent as an industry then we should have the data on what it on what it takes electronically or from electrical use um, or energy use of what it takes to spin and then there should be something for weaving, like best and said. If you wish, you can share all of our data tomorrow. You can yeah. have all your data tomorrow. So okay. really, so then we could actually look at it and then see output and then compare how everyone's doing. You think that's a reasonable request for the next couple of years? Definitely. Yes. Okay. Okay. So then what's... Can, can right. I add one thing on that? Yeah. Uh, Sharing data is not enough. Also, uh, we should tell the uh, procedures how we achieve that data. Yes. Because only data is not helping. So in order to help the industry, we should uh, help uh, the other uh, denim factories how we achieve that data. If yeah, they I think it's ask great. Anything, they should uh, be, uh, clearly ask us or we should ask them. Well, one of the issues is going to be some machines, that, like for instance, weaving, some machines are faster than others. So that's that's the saving, but, you know. Anyway, why well, should but, but let's go to the, the final question that I had. We're all doing this amazing job. I think as an industry, we're out of control. Great, we're doing. Everybody's really, really into this. We're working at really hard. Does the, does the consumer realize, or does the consumer care? And if they don't, what do we do to make them actually um, care and appreciate what we're doing? Abru, I'll let you go first. Or yeah. you the last, Abru. What would you like? That's okay, I can go it. I okay. can go it. I I think we're seeing a 
definitely a progress in, in the consumer um, side. So, so we've been discussing about sustainability and whose responsibility is sustainability for the past decade, right? right. You know, every, every time we get together, it's your responsibility, my response. It's actually, I, I had another way of thinking, but the more I think about it, it's actually the responsibility of the industry to do what we're doing you know, and then find the right language to engage the consumer where they understand and, and, and reflect to, like, you know, most of them understand organic, most of them understand water really? consumption. Well, most, I'm saying most. <laughs> There's, of course, a lot to be done uh, still. Um, and this is why, for instance, we have actually launched a sustainability dictionary on our future possibilities platform. And we're trying to educate every stakeholder. It could be the customer, it could be the consumer, it could be the students. Uh, we had a recent um, engagement with SCAD uh, University where we got together with the design students. It's a multi-layer job, you yeah. know? And it's again, our job to communicate our efforts in the right way. and educate and train the consumers and all the stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you. Junaid, thank you. Junaid. Yeah. So, uh, what do, I consumers, think, do the consumers understand what we're doing? They appreciate it? And how do we I, make them appreciate it? I personally think, you know, uh, maybe, you know, in terms of uh, the sustainability or transparency, maybe our consumers, they don't understand well. And for them, maybe it's, a, it's just a one pair of jeans. But I think it's our responsibility to make sure and to educate them uh, and tell them, you know, that if you're wearing one pair of jeans, how much X amount of water one pair of jeans is costing. And, you know, if, if the cotton that has been used or if there's any other synthetic material has been used, you know, they should know this is the product, you know, that they're wearing and it's harming the environment, uh, you know, that can be dangerous for the future generation. So I think some of the consumers, they do care. Uh, but most of them, I personally think they don't know. Uh, and, you know, this is our responsibility to create an awareness and, you know, to be more transparent and to tell them, you know, uh, that these are going to be uh, uh, the direction, you know, uh, for the future generation. We have to make sure that we are all responsible in terms of raw material or processing Thank or uh, common laundry process. Thank you. Besson, please wrap it up. Hi, uh, I'm in the textile industry over 25 years. So because I'm in the industry more than 25 years, I get some information about uh, how the goods are produced, roughly uh, the water consumption about that, roughly energy consumption about that. But I am wondering this because I'm in the industry. And uh, by the way, I am for, uh, more than 40 years old. The issues, I'm an X uh, generation man. Uh, X generation man does not wonder normally if they are if you are not in the industry, an X generation man or a woman does not wonder about how it is produced, where it is produced, uh, what is the water usage uh, in order to produce one meter of uh, denim. No one uh, in my age, if not in the industry, does not care about that. But the uh, especially the millennium kids, uh, the Z generation who are below 18 years old are asking for every uh, kind of data. They are, uh, they are more curious than we are. I got a girl, uh, she's about uh, 14 years old. Believe in me, she's asking uh, such kind, uh, very clever questions who cannot ask uh, if, she's not, uh, if they are not in the uh, denim industry. So the, 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 uh, the new generation uh, the uh, Z generation people, uh, the girls or the boys are so curious and uh, so curious that we should feed them with the right information. We should feed them with the right, right data. So that's so important. They are not just like us. They are different. Thank you. I think we did a good job in this, um, this little session. And I think, um, I, I think the viewers will like it. Thank you guys for doing this. I appreciate it. And um, we're going to try to do what you suggest or what you were talking about. We'll try to get Kingpins to have data and capture it and celebrate the best and help everybody else improve. Thank you all. And um, that's what Thank you, Andrew.